Bob, how you doing, dude? Stand up and uh, from New Jersey and Philly area. That's right. Nice, dude. What you been up to? What was it? I think it was last year when we saw you. That's right, last year. Yeah, I've been uh, I've been hitting the AC casinos a little bit. I was up in uh, New York and um, Staten Island at a place called the Looney Bin. Uh, had a great show up there. Uh, this week I'm going to be uh, open up for Big Daddy Graham from 94 WIP, which is a sports radio station. He's the overnight guy, big legendary Philadelphia comedian. Awesome. I'll be with him. Uh, last week, that's right. No, last week I was with uh, uh, Mitch Fatel. I don't know if you guys know Mitch Fatel. I mm. opened for I opened for Mitch. I think so. Yeah. So uh, he's been on Comedy Central. Had a Comedy Central uh, thing. So uh, awesome. Yeah. Very very funny guy. Yeah. Point that down. Oh right come there. on. <clears throat> but um. <laughs> What are we doing then? The week after, well, after, I, after I'm with uh, Big Daddy, uh, uh, Saturday, the following weekend, I'm going to be at the uh, Comedy Works in Bristol. So I'll be uh, working there. And then I'm doing a, I, do, I do a thing every year for the uh, New Jersey State Police Chiefs Association. So I'm doing that with a couple of friends of mine from the Borgata. Uh, nice. Jeff Fat Rat Bastard Pirami, who's a pretty funny guy. Uh, another friend of mine, uh, Keith Purnell. Uh, uh, Missy Allen's another comedian that's going to be on there too. So we're we're doing that show together. So uh, I, got, I got a lot of good stuff going Sound, on. So. Yeah, sounds like Dude, it's well, packed. I've been working. Yeah, I've been working a lot. So that's good. That's so really. I good. fooled all these motherfuckers. So it's <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the show for the uh, police chiefs. Where do you guys do that? It's actually at the Masonic Home. There's like you know uh, over. There's like a theater. It's in Burlington, New Jersey. <laughs> the Masonic Home. So. We try not to wake the uh, residents, but anyway, it's uh, they have like this theater there. It's it's like pretty good. They use they usually have like four or five hundred people. This thing. So this wow. is the this is the third year the third the third year I'm doing the show with the guys. I uh, and then they had me. I was down at resorts about a month and a half ago. I did a thing for the state police, uh, New Jersey State Police, cool uh, chiefs. So I I did that with another buddy of mine and. Uh, Taylor Mason, who's uh, you know he tours nationally. He's uh, you know he writes for Disney and also oh, awesome. uh, I kind of produce I produce that show and then I'm you know a lot of times I'm like middling for like a you know a bigger headliner. So nice. That's so uh, awesome. you know I headline every once in a while, but I'm more like a you know story you know still middling like doing a half an hour part of the show. So cool. So, cool. Uh, Have you done any more acting? As um no I uh my my thing from Creed I, I, I didn't make the final cut but. Those yeah. Bastards. <laughs> uh, no, I um I've been doing some voiceover work. Um, oh, cool. You know, I did I did a did thing for Coke, um, and I was I was actually just doing a buddy of mine reeled me into, into this acting class. I was doing some acting last week, so I may try to, you know, it kind of helps with the stand up a little bit, you know. But um, I haven't really done anything wrong, like any, any legitimate. So, mm. yeah. But uh, it's fun. It keeps me out of the house, like coming here. So you know. Like, <laughs> just gotta get out just gotta get out that's, that's why I used to go to work an hour early when I was married just, yeah yeah it only took 20 minutes to get there but yeah like, yeah I gotta go I, gotta I just, sure I just wanna be no late I just wanna... <laughs> <laughs> that was the party when I was married was going to work yeah no man it's, it's uh, I mean since I saw you guys you know I, doing comedy is a process you just keep doing more and more stuff you get more and more gigs but you know I'm uh I, you know, I have a lot of people that have been very good to me, and, and I get a lot of spots. So, I, I, and I'm doing a lot more private gigs too. So, uh, I kind of, you know, as a comedian, you know, if you can work clean, you can get a lot more work. Yeah. So, um, you know, a lot of guys, you know, I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I like to drop the f bomb as much as the the next guy, <laughs> but a lot of like the corporate gigs, or you know, like a lot of times where they're paying big money, wow. you know, they want to kind of, you know, keep it clean, not get like too like over the edge. So. You know that's been working out for do, me. Do too, you keep so. the act strictly clean, or do you like switch it up when when you can? I, I innuendo, but I don't really. Yeah, I mean, but the worst thing I'll do is like I, mean, I do a bit about having a vasectomy. You know, uh, you know, but, but that's not you know it's not that big of a deal. But not like doing, you know, talking, you know, dropping the f bomb. Yeah, it's funny. Like people like you know. The bookers or the people that book it, just don't don't drop the f bomb. You know, it's like there's old people here, so like okay, so but, but you know, I just do material that's, you know, well, however I'm gonna get paid, I'll do whatever. <laughs> my my friend Coleman Green says I he did a uh, a nursing home for a bunch of old timers one time, and he did the same joke for 20 minutes, and uh, so like he's like just pay me, goddamn. <laughs> Did Craig Lurgren did like a senior citizen home once, yeah. not too long oh, ago. Uh, did you have oh, Craig on the show? We've had him on a bunch. Oh Come man, fly. he's a great guy. Dude, he's amazing. Yeah. Um, what did it mean? Him and I, we worked together at the Comedy Works. Wow. Yeah. I was, I was middling, and he came in just. To, you know, a lot of times when you're on the road, <clears throat> you'll you'll drop in and like, hey, can I do five minutes? It might be something you're working on, and oh, he wow. came. We kind of hit it off, and uh, yeah, he's he's a good guy. He's a very funny guy. 
Yeah, so, I enjoyed so him. funny. A lot of so energy. much energy. Yeah. yeah. See that? Dude, he doesn't want to take breaks when he comes on. Yeah. Like, and he calls me a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I got ads. I got sponsors to play, and I need a cigarette. Like, I, I think the last <laughs> phone call we did with him, Rob just started playing ads over Craig. <laughs> the last two, we had to hang up on him. The last two times. Craig, called. shut the fuck up. <laughs> Love him so much. He's great. He's, He's going to be here in a couple weeks. Right? Yeah, where's that? Where's the book? Because uh, I was supposed to have Buddha. I don't know if you know Stephen Buddha. I... I, I do know him, not, not that well, but I've met him. He's I've working a lot in uh, in AC, and he just got a thing going. He was supposed to come, but yeah, Craig's going to fill in. He's uh, oh, was Buddha, was he at the Atlantic City Comedy Club? Yeah, yeah. yeah, so yeah it's okay. on Wednesdays, and uh, yeah, yeah, Craig will be in on the 11th. Yeah. The 11th of October. Yeah. Uh, you said you're doing a lot of private gigs. Are those like those are like the corporate gigs, I guess? Yeah, that- and, they, and they tend to pay a, a lot more, you know, so it's like, you know, I don't really, honest to God, I don't really do this for the money. I do it because I like it. But it's like kind of like I, you know, like I tell my kids, he's, my kid's like a film producer in New York. Like, you know, it's like, oh, you're not going to make any money to do that. But he does what he loves and he, and he gets paid. So, like, you know, there's times I get a lot of money. Sometimes I don't get any money. <laughs> so, you know, uh, you know, maybe a couple hundred bucks to do a spot at a club or, or whatever, you know. So, uh, you know, but uh, again, I'm not really doing it for the money. I just, you know. Because I like it. So, do you mm. like the corporate uh, crowds, or do you prefer like actually going to a club? I just like more than three people in front of me. So, where I go, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so, so this so, yeah. is no good. Yeah. <laughs> I, let me tell you something, man. I've done I've done gigs. I, I, it doesn't matter. I, you yeah. Know, if, you know, I, I've done gigs like starting out like there was like ten people in a room. You know, I was like, and that's actually like I've done like I've announced for the Phillies and like been in front of big crowds. Oh, wow. And wow. like, you know, like forty-five. Oh my God, forty-five thousand people. What's 45, worse? I think that's no, better. The bigger crowd. You're exactly right. It's like forty-five thousand people. You get lost. There's no like personal. Now I'm doing stand up for half an hour for eight people. Like you have to connect to those eight people. Yeah, you, know, you see like, him yawning. You see him like looking yeah, at the phone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and it was like yeah. I remember the first time. I I think I might have shit myself. And uh, yeah, but it was like I got through it. And it was like every experience. Like we just did a gig last week. Um, uh, it was a it, it was a great gig. Um, um, uh, Joel Rich, you know, Soul Joel Richardson. He, uh, Kevin Israel works with him. I know you guys are mm, buddies. With yeah, Kevin we're buddies with Kevin too. So Kevin, you know, he gets booked a lot with Soul Joel. But it, it's an outdoor gig, and it's 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 a little bit different because sometimes, like you usually when you're doing comedy, it's in a club. It's very tight quarters. Mm. Laughs resonate, and like you know, uh, like one of the guys, oh, I've never been outside before. Like, well, you know, it kind of you have. It's like you got to get it under your belt. It was it was a little bit different, but you know. It's you got to. It's everything's an experience. You got to learn from. But but being in front of seven eight people, you know, just it makes you stronger. I was so, just gonna uh, say, once you get through that, you can pretty much do anything. Yeah, it's a, you know, so it's all a process. So I, you know, I have fun. Nice, nice. What are you friends with, Latisse? Yes, I am. She's awesome. We she called in and she's coming in too. I think really? November sometime. She's, she's got a show on Wild. Uh, you know, uh, she, I, I just did her show. That's the last oh, podcast. That's cool. As a matter of fact, a funny story. I mean, Latisse and I basically started at the very same time. Wow. You know, like within a m- couple of months of each other. So, and uh, she's been very successful. I mean, she's she's actually been on television and uh, uh, she was on the View. Yeah, with, with, uh, with Whoopi and with Whoopi uh, Goldberg and um, the, yeah. uh, what's his name? I love him. Uh, and he commented, I, like I tagged him, like because we we talked about him, Mario Cantone. We talked about him, right? And I, on Facebook, I like mentioned that we talked about him, and I tagged him in it, and he watched it, and he said he loved it. Yeah, I was like awesome. honored. I was honored. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so cool. But yeah, she's awesome. She's coming in, I think, like uh, the middle or end of November. Yeah, she's very funny. I've worked with her dozens of times. She and she kills every time. Mm. So she's very funny. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Her show's great too. I've checked it out a couple times. Yeah. Cool. What um, what are you still doing the DJ thing? Yeah, I am. Yeah. So, I, how do you find time for that? With well, I, you know, it's like I, I actually I have a son that's probably like your guy's age, who's very. I mean, he's very good. He's but he's been like I've been teaching him since he's about seven or eight. My other son's twenty. To send him out, he's really good. They go out. <laughs> I, I mean, they, we, you know, we do. I do. I do that because I like it, but. Uh, Believe it or not, like I, I get paid a lot of money to, be, to do that, but yeah. I'll pass on those gigs to do comedy shit. Don't ask me what the fuck's wrong with me. But, uh, <laughs> I probably would too. It's yeah, like narcissism. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Want them cheering yeah. for you? Please, please love me. <laughs> but um, but uh, no, I still you know do you know do a bunch of weddings and stuff, and the DJ company's doing pretty good. So we're uh, that's cool. Yeah, you know, I'm always putting stuff on there. That's it's Marsdale Productions. If anybody ever needs a DJ, uh, you know, call me up and you know. 
We'll, we'll give you the Robin Slip discount. Yeah. Like, whatever that the fuck that is. I'll just make some shit. <laughs> but, is it, uh, it, it's you and your two sons? <laughs> it's me. Yeah, it's me and my two sons. And then I have two other guys that work with me. Uh, there's a guy in Philly. I don't know if you guys ever heard of Bob Pantano. But, um, mm. you know, Bob's But you know Bob's been around a long time. But one of my friends kind of goes out with him. He was actually just doing the Claridge all summer. Okay. So uh, Tony Q is his name. So he's like my, my other main guy. Uh, I got this other guy... Uh, Al, who works with me, so, but it's pretty much me and my sons, and then those guys kind of ha- help me out, you know, and, and uh, if, if it, you know we get more work, and I'll I'll tell the clients that if like if I'm not available, or I'll help those guys out, but um I've kind of I mean like back when I was like in my 20s and uh, early 30s, I used to have like probably like 12 DJs out working for me. Wow. So I had a bunch of clubs, and then but clubs are like kind of like you don't see like clubs like dance clubs like you used to back in the day you know like okay. you know now you have yeah. you know everybody's got you know I mean, you could just put stuff on your iPod so a lot of cl- places we would do would be you know just would just be a bar and we would just be playing requests for people and we did dance clubs too but that kind of dried up so we kind of went with more of the, the the private stuff so. All right and is that why you have a smaller group now yeah I charge a little bit more money and then it's just like you know if somebody wants me to work for them, I mean I'm I'm like I'm like moderately priced for DJs. Like for a guy that's, I mean, I was on the radio for a long time and, you know, guys with my experience get a little bit more, but you know, what I charge is like pretty reasonable, you know? So I'm, I'm just, again, it's like one of those things where I, I do make money doing it, uh, but I would probably still, I would do it. For, if somebody said you can't do it anymore, you have to do it for free. I'd still do it for free because it's a lot of fun, you know, you know, you know, a couple hundred people on the dance floor and, it's just another thing that I enjoy doing. So I hate my day job. Did you mention that? I do too. No. Oh, it's <laughs> no, miserable. But no. <laughs> I have one more thing that I want to say. Do you do, do stand up while you do DJing? Like every now and then you throw a joke in there? Uh, no, brides hate that shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. I was going to say, like, when I go to like my regular job, it just doesn't feel that doesn't feel like life. Like yeah. the show, like yeah, yeah, is life. And then I go go back. I got well, look I, at. These. I like I like my regular. I mean, it's not. I, I'm in sales, but I, I like, yeah, I like the interaction and everything. But it's like, hey, you know what? But you know, I I do pretty good. I get you know, it's I'd be sitting in the freaking dark, you know, probably doing a podcast if I didn't have a real job. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, 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 I'm just kidding. I tease. I we kidding. have lights for now. <laughs> no, the lights are on. <laughs> I'm, I'm, fuck, I'm fucking with you. I'm sorry. <laughs> You guys drink a lot of goddamn beer. Look at all these beers. These people can't see all these beer bottles. Oh, shit. <laughs> well, who is it? Was it um, Anthony Ennis? One of the guys said, yeah. Or it was, I think it was Craig when he called. He said, I forget how he said, like, he just mentioned all the empties in the kitchen. <laughs> 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 I think he said we have more empties than we have listeners. <laughs> <laughs> Ring the bell. <laughs> there you That's go. for you, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when he called the... Congratulate us on our hundredth show. That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's good. What, what, what do you got coming up? Uh, you said Bob. Um, well, th- this weekend I'm with Big Daddy Graham. Okay, I'm actually gonna. I'll be on his radio show five forty uh, four forty five on ninety four point one uh, Friday. That's early, what I was gonna ask. What did morning. you do in radio? I, I, you know, basically I was in college radio. Then I was in on which is now New Jersey one hundred one point five. It was Kicks one hundred one and a half. I, my thing was we did a Saturday night dance party, so that 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 went on for uh, a few years, and then um, the radio station kind of went to an all talk format. Mm. But then I kind of st- I kind of stayed with that, you know, doing the mobile stuff, and then I just do, I do commercials every once in a while. I have a couple guys that use me for voiceovers, a couple of video production companies. That's so awesome. So I'll do you know I'll do different stuff you know for them. So. What was the Saturday night uh, dance party? Was it just you played dance music, like remixes and stuff? Yeah, well, <clears throat> now this is going back. Now this was like there was it was vinyl records, so this is back in the early nineties. Nice. So like, um, it was a live broadcast. So, so it was like you were in a club, and then there was another DJ from the radio station. Uh, this guy uh, Willie Twyman is good friend, another friend of mine, Steve McKay, who's Willie passed away, believe it or not, a very young guy. Uh, that, that was kind of that was a tough one. But my friend Steve's mm-hmm. around. But they would do. Um, we would be in the club, and it was like you went to a club, but it was we were broadcasting, and we, we'd take breaks. So we kept everybody kind of, you know, doing their, uh, just keeping them on the dance floor, and I would basically produce the show, and then, because like doing radio and doing uh, clubs is like, it's like, it's like apples and oranges. It's like, you know, you, when you're on a radio, it's like, you know, commercial song, there's no mixing, there's no like, you don't really have to worry about the flow of the music as much as you are when you're in a club. And people, I mean, you've been to a club, you know, everything's mixed. Right. Do you, uh, so, you know, you know, do you use, um, 
turntables or do you well back then i did but now it's you know we use serato which is like kind of like the go-to most djs use that there's a couple of programs out there it's like <clears throat> virtual dj yeah there's a thing called tractor but m most of the guys that you know use uh serato so okay you just get you know you use a laptop and you know you, you come through you know then you have like a player yeah you know by, like a pioneer which actually it kind of mimics a turntable because you'll have like two pads on there. I've you seen can the, like, the USB ones you plug into your computer. Yeah. You, you can you like? have ones now. You just plug a USB in and it'll in the and the song titles you can search on the unit itself. Like that, wow. uh, I think Denon <laughs> makes one like that. Mine, I just you know I use a you know I have an uh, iMac. We have a bunch of iMacs okay. and we just we look up on there and cool. you know go from there. So yeah, I saw a guy recently who had it like he opened up a case and it was all these like USB sticks. Yeah, case, all, like, oh, that's and crazy. Yeah. I used to know the wow. dudes with like yeah the flight case with the vinyl turntables yeah. and everything and yeah and then they went to the CD ones. Yeah, that was that was for a while. It was like four or five years. Yeah, I heard like mixed reviews. Some people loved them. Some people hated them. Like, well, you know the thing about it. Well, the early when they first went to CDs, you couldn't get songs on CDs like you know like original type of stuff, and it was it was hard. Mm. But then they were very they were very temperamental. So like if you if you were at a job, it was just like uh, like a turntable, you know they, they would they would skip, you know. So ah. then they put, then they put in these anti shock things, so it kind of eliminated that. So you you know you'd have like a two or three second before, but if the floor was vibrating really bad, it would still like, it would be all jacked up. <laughs> oh wow! Whereas like if you were like in like some of the better clubs, I worked in a club that literally the guy had two concrete pillars that went straight down to the foundation. And were built around it, so it wasn't on the floor. So, okay. So the turntables there, they were never going to move. That's Different cool. places, they had them hanging on chains from the ceiling, you know, like wow. to keep them from skipping and stuff like that. But yeah. this is like, you know, back in the day. But yeah, but no, the computer's the greatest. It's like, you know, I walk in, I, I don't really use a USB. I just use an external hard drive that has like 60,000 songs plugging in. And you know nothing skips. Where know. did you do clubs? Like Philly or New York? Yeah, I was in uh, Philly. I did. Um, a uh, place called Club Atlantis. I did the Coastline. Was a, a pretty big club. I did like you know major club. These both these places. I closed them down. So uh, <laughs> they club the place where I did the, the the radio show was a place called Jesse's up in Yardville. Uh, there's a place called the Granada in Trenton. I used to do. Then I, there was a place called the Electric Playground, which was like a, a teen thing, which I used to manage. But I would DJ there on occasion. There was one uh, in New York that was a church. Really? Limelight, yeah. The limelight. No, yeah, yeah. I, I got friends of friends. Everybody was a bounce for that. Really? That, yeah. yeah, that was like a legendary club. Yeah. yeah. I have friends of friends that like, I, I never DJed in New York, just, you know, it was all like Philly clubs, but, you know, I was pretty well-known DJ in Philly, you know, so. That's cool. But, you know, uh, you know, it was, I had a full head of hair. I could actually get women. Like <laughs> now it's over for me, so. I'm here with you fucking guys. Are you kidding me? <laughs> 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 nice nice what uh has anything crazy i know last time you told us some crazy stuff that happened has anything since we last talked to you go down at either a comedy show or uh the, what was the crazy thing i told you what was that because i could repeat the story nobody would know <sighs> somebody got in a fight somebody was so oh, yeah. drunk yeah, at, yeah, yeah, at, at one of yeah. your dj gigs and didn't he punch out a wind like a mirror or a window of a car oh that was that was a dj <laughs> that was a wedding that was the night that the groom got locked up that's my, I, that's that was my all-time favorite night because I got paid for the whole night and it was over in like a 20 minutes. It was, <laughs> Didn't we, was it you or... I think we also talked to somebody that did like a wedding that was like a black magic type of thing. Like they were doing some kind of witchcraft or so, some weird ass shit. I don't, I don't remember that. Somebody. No. I, yeah. I, well, I remember my cousin, the witch. I wasn't invited to that wedding. They were all into that goth shit. I think, like, <laughs> yeah. she, I think she was laying in the coffin or something. Or something. Oh, <laughs> oh, wow. I, I pray to God he's not listening. <laughs> out of the fucking family. <laughs> I picture that would be some some type of wedding. No. <laughs> Just him in a coffin. Well, we did. We did have a. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I might have told you, but the, uh, I, it was early on, and one of my guy, the guy was like in the front row, and he looked, you know, he was like basically looked like Charles Manson. <laughs> And I was like, I was looking yeah. at him like, this guy's off. And I was like, and I said something to him, like, like people were like aware of this guy that he, you know, when he walked in, like he was like, he was not right. <laughs> and I was like, you know, dude, like you're like my freaking crazy uncle at uh, Thanksgiving dinner. And he's like, I'm not part of the show. I was like, okay. So I'm like, all right, I'll leave the dude alone. So like, I, so I got off and then the next guy, my, my buddy Frank, who's a comedian, who's now quit the business, thank God. But anyway, he, he went in and started really hammering this guy 
So I could see the guy like getting like all tense up and everything. I'm like, this is not good. Like, and I used to like I used to bounce like in clubs, and, and you kind of get like you get a sixth sense of like when shit's about to go down. Yeah. When you work in a club like that, so I'm like I'm like watching this guy like this is not good. So he gets off, and then the headliner started, and then he now the guy stood up and he was get, getting in the guy's face, and and Latisse will t- I don't know if Latisse was there that night, but she knows the guy simply D. He's a you know he's a pretty funny guy. But, yeah. Um, he gets up. The guy goes to attack him, and D like, and and his whole stick is like, he's a black guy. He's like, I can't fight. I can't play basketball. Like, you want to fight me? He's like, but I will bite the shit out of you. Like, it's one of his funny lines. <laughs> well, this this motherfucker was lying because he he, I, he hit him with the left, and the guy went down because he went to attack him. He's like, bam, from the stage. So I went up and I'm like grabbing him, you know, getting the guy off of him and everything because now he's gonna go back for him. He's like, he wanted to call the cops. I'm like, you just attacked him. And I had just started working in this club, so I was worried about the club owner like getting bad press or being on TV. Like this is the only club that's booking me; it can't be shut the fuck down. So I was like trying to get his ass out. God. So, um, wow. that's you know, so we so the guy left, and that was the end of it. But that was like the crit. But I haven't had anybody like you know, you know, I I mess with people, but like I, it's not like really my thing. Like I kind of I'll talk to somebody or whatever, but it's not like I'm like you know like. You know, get, getting on him like continually. You know, yeah. if the guy gives it to me, I'll give it to him. But I'm not like looking to go into the audience. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. but uh, but I've been. You know, usually, people are pretty cool with me. So. Yeah, that's cool, Bob. We have to wrap it up. It's almost right, break guys. time. But uh, where can everybody find you? Uh, you can check me out on uh, Bob Morrisdale Twitter, and you can also I'm also on Facebook. Just look up Bob Morrisdale, and uh, I usually have my schedule. I, I throw it up there. Uh, couple of weeks i mean you guys have been great about retweeting and stuff like that so we i appreciate the support and you know man i'll be i'll be listening to the show but thanks for having me on i appreciate it guys dude thanks all for right. coming and if you right. want to stick around a little bit or whatever you want all right cool thanks we got a got a bunch of interviews